What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Flop. Today's episode, we're talking about how hard work doesn't necessarily guarantee success. But before we jump into that topic, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Triple Crown. Um, Definitely check them out in their Facebook page. We always link that down below. They have a lot of new things in the works, and so it's definitely a good idea to keep up with them and see what they're doing on Facebook. Um, Also, we'd like to thank our newer sponsor, Renown Bag Co., Dad, do you want to give us an update on what they're doing? Uh, yeah, so definitely I've been in touch and uh, they have got some really cool designs coming out. Uh, I I was kind of blown away by them. I think they're, they're pretty sick. So um, they look I wish I had mine. They've got some coming to me, but uh, I have not gotten them yet, sadly. So I'm not able to display them or show them off. But um, they got some stuff coming, and I am very excited about it. So um, once I have some in hand, I plan to do like a full line review, uh, things like that. So uh, just keep your eyes peeled. Uh, go to their Facebook page for updates, and uh, definitely be checking out the site to see when these uh, go live because I think I think people are going to really like these designs, and, and the bags themselves are great. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. Heck yeah, and uh, these bags will be ACO stamped. So all you ACO yes guys and gals uh this this could be these could be your new favorite bag for sure i really like the ones i've thrown so far speaking of bags what do you have back behind you there today ah uh, today i have the bg samurais i just got so i haven't done anything Sweet. to them or, or thrown them yet so i'm really excited about this this is one of the newest uh bags coming out from bg and of course you know i'm a big bg fan so mm-hmm. uh very curious about trying these bad boys out and I don't know yet, but uh, I got my toss toss here from my from my guy Stephen Childress. So heck um, yeah, he sent me some of this nuke that's in the purple bottle right here that I have not I've not tried anything yet. I don't have a set of bags that I'm I, I, I'm I want to put the nuked on yet. I don't want to do the samurai in the nuked because the last time I conditioned or anything a bag that style, it just got real floppy. So. Uh, I'll probably do maybe an OG on that one, but um, I, I want to get that nuked tried out quick because I, I've heard really good things about it. And for people who really enjoy a floppy bag, this could be like this could be your like secret formula to get it, you know, to get them out of the FedEx package or out of the USPS package and then ready to play the next day. That could that could be your ticket. So uh, I plan to try it out, and I'll keep you guys posted on on the results. Heck yeah, that's awesome. That's uh, I, I really love that stuff. If you guys ever want to learn how to use the toss sauce, we have a video on our channel, um, and uh, I think it worked really well and was really successful. It's I've I've done several sets of bags with it, and I've had I've had good results with them. You know, and everyone's going to find their own little ways of tweaking. Uh, I usually tumble a little longer. Um, you know, stuff like that. So you may I may run through a rinse cycle in the wash. You know, just. Again, you're, you know, people tweak it the way, but in our video breakdown that we did, I did it step by step by the letter and the results were great. So, uh, it's just yep. kind of getting it to your own, um, specs that you want it at, uh, after that. But, uh, again, out of the, out of the, out of the box, it, it does great. Uh, it does. so definitely check that video out if you're interested in the, in the toss sauce. Yeah, I agree. Okay, cool. So um, before we get into our topic, I want to talk about something exciting that we're doing. We are going to do the Flop 21 Day Challenge. And this is just an idea that we had to engage with um, the community and hopefully get some accountability so that we can make sure that we're um, every day we're chipping away at uh, working towards our goals. And so this Flop 21 Day Challenge, basically what we're going to do is we are going to do two deck arounds and 100 air mails uh, every day for 21 days. And uh, then we're just going to we're gonna look at our average score for the deck arounds in the beginning, uh, plus our, our 100 air mails. And then hopefully that end result um, shows and speaks to all the work that we did over those 21 days. I think that consistency is a huge thing in this sport. And so this will be a great way for us to engage with each other and hold each other accountable. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to be involved in that, we're going to post um, a post on our Facebook page the same day this video goes up. And uh, just like the post and let us know if this is something that you're going to want to participate in. And then at the end of the 21 days, 
um, we're going to randomly select a, a winner. So it's not necessarily the person who has the greatest results over 21 days. Number one, we have no idea of, of how to keep track of all of that data from each individual person who may want to play. We may have 200 no. people decide they want to do this, and that's just a whole lot of information. So what we'd like to do is just take the likes and the comments on the Facebook post and then just, uh, you know, over the course of that 21 days, um, just, you know, keep in touch with us, you know, Facebook message us, let us know what's going on. You know, are you having success? Have you noticed anything? Uh, I know several of you guys out there in flop nation, um, have been keeping us apprised of your progress and we love it. We love getting those messages, that, um, you know, that tell us you're getting better and that you're growing. And, and so, uh, we couldn't ask for anything more from, um, from the fans of the show. And, uh, that's exactly why we're here is because we want to help you guys grow and get better. And so um, that's what we're thinking about with this 21 day challenge. It's just like it's a perfect opportunity for guys uh, who, you know, our, our prime demographic seems to be guys who just are, you know, a lot of a lot of early uh, cornhole players who are just getting into the game, who are really just trying to figure out the way the best way to get better. And so, yep. you know, I kind of love that we've found this little niche uh, of people and um, that it's funny because it's just the community, the community has been so great. Um, you know, the flop guys reaching out to us and just letting us know, uh, what's going on in their lives. So we just thought this would be another way of us to be able to, uh, engage with you and to, um, kind of partner with you on a journey of, of getting better at cornhole, which is, you know, what we're all trying to do. So, um, definitely, like I said, like the post, um, like the post, let us know that you're going to be in or whatever. And then, um, you know, maybe you don't get to do 21 days consecutively, but, if you've recently been practicing, you know, once or twice a week, maybe this ups it to three, four times a week. Hey, that's progress. That's getting better. So I don't want you to be afraid of jumping in on the post later. So if you don't get in on day one, just like the post, let us know that you're going to try to get better uh, going forward. And then what we'll do is we'll take someone, uh, you know, randomly at the end and uh, send you guys some flop swag. So, you know, just to, just to say thanks for, uh, for being part of the community. Heck yeah, guys. We, we appreciate it in advance. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a fun 21 days. I think we'll all get better. Um, before we, before we move on, I did want to kind of explain. So our two deck arounds that we're going to do a day, a deck around is literally, I, I, gosh, I think it's a Latin root deca, meaning like 100. I don't know. I could be horribly off on that, but, um, or maybe 10. It's, yeah, it's, ba it's basically, or yeah, 10, <laughs> it's basically 10 rounds. Um, <laughs> It's basically ten rounds, throwing just four bags, a normal a normal four bag round, ten times, mm -hmm. and then every at the end of every round you add your points. So if you throw a ten, um, that's ten points for that round. You throw a seven, seven points for that round, and it's um, you know whatever your score is at the end, that is your deck around. Correct, absolutely. So, you know, if your score ends up being eighty three, that you know then that's what you got for the deck around. So. Um, that would be a pretty decent score, you know, right out of the gate. So congratulations if that's if that yeah, is your decker round score. But uh, you know, you, if you're a beginner, earlier player, you're probably looking somewhere between a fifty and sixty five, seventy mark. You know, mm -hmm. um, so you know, again, don't don't be worried about it. Just see what your thing is. And I would also, I would suggest taking this very seriously. I would suggest you know, don't fudge your numbers because if you want to see from day one to day twenty one how you've improved, you know, or if you've improved at all, I would wager that there's no possible way for you to throw a deck around on day one and not do better than that on day 21. Because yeah. if that's the case, then there's something else going on here. I don't know. It could be, you know, demons that have possessed your cornhole facility <laughs> and they're just, <laughs> they're refusing probably to let demons. your bags go in the hole. It's probably demons. That's where I went right out of the gate. I mean, it's it's got to be. But anyway. I'm going to start blaming demons for my bad performances. God, it would just I would just be blaming them all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you, can, you don't need some sort of cornhole software to do the deck arounds. Um, most commonly, people use the app Scoreholio um, for their deck arounds. There's a, a setting on there to do it. There's also the iPlay.acl um, website, which is not an application, but it is a website that you go to and log in and make an account. And they have a, a setting 
uh, in their little grid of mm -hmm. options called practice tools. And you can go in there and do deck rounds as well. Um, both sites keep up with um, every round that you've done. Um, I think Squareholio is a little bit more accurate with giving you dates and, and times and stuff like that. But um, both will do the trick. But if you don't like technology and you don't want to mess with it, um, you can absolutely do this on paper. Just 10 rounds. And, uh, you know, for this challenge, we're going to do two deck rounds a day, uh, plus those 100 airmails. And hopefully uh, you guys see significant progress. Yeah, hopefully you see your numbers go up from day one to day 21. So, and then we're going to do our best to actually participate in this as well. Um, but I know both of us have been absolutely been obliterated by life lately. Um, That's I know right. that, uh, we haven't put out any content in a couple of weeks and we are sorry for that. We want to let you guys know that we're just as passionate as ever about, about the show and about you guys in the community. It's just been crazy. Life just happens. I'm changing jobs. And so for the past couple of weeks, I've been trying to finish up everything at my last job. I start my new job tomorrow and I know that it's just been, it's been a whirlwind. And so we've not been able to not only film the podcast, but I haven't been able to get out there and throw for reviews or anything like that, but I'm really going to make an effort to uh, be more consistent with uploading content for you um, because I don't want you guys in the community to think that we've uh, uh, lost our, our passion for this. We are still just as passionate as we no. were. It's just life is just smacking us in the face. So um, we're going to do our best to, to keep it up. Heck yeah. So let's jump in. Hard work, it doesn't guarantee success, but every person that is successful um, works hard at some capacity. Dad, what do you think about that? I think that's absolutely accurate. I think that um, it, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who's at the top of their craft who is not going to say to you when, when they are having their autobiography or their biography written, well, I was just really good at it. And so I never practiced at all, and I just am amazing, and I don't know how, but I just am. You, that's never going to be in anybody's biography. Um, mm -hmm. It's always going to be, you're going to hear the same stories time and time and time again. Man, I, it wasn't always this, you know, it wasn't always easy for me, and I struggled, and I, you know, and I just kept fighting, and I kept being told no, or I kept failing, and I just kept failing. And all of a sudden I, I, I got that one win and then I got another and then I got another and it just started to click. But it was because I worked hard and because I pushed myself and because I sacrificed and I, and I gave and I, I bled for it. You know what I mean? It's always going to be a similar tale. You know, it's going to be a, it's going to be the story of Michael Jordan not making his high school basketball team and then fighting and fighting and fighting until he finally broke through. It's, it's going to be that time and time and time again. So when you say that, uh, but also, again, I, I find it hard to believe that some of those people who were absolutely just crushing it on the practice field or the practice area or whatever it was that they were doing, they're going to be putting in that hard work and grueling hours and sacrifice and all of this stuff and still not winning. Yep. And it's just pushing through. It's, it's making sure that you, you understand that it will yield you success eventually. And whether that success is being the top of your game or the top of your field, or whether that success is beating yourself from yesterday or beating yourself from two weeks ago, that's how you have to really look at success. You know, uh, so many people want to, want to just, just say, you know, when they're like, Hey, what do, what do you, what do you view success? And they're like utter and total domination. Okay, for one person, that may be their version of success. But for somebody else, it may be just, man, I just want to be able to win. If I get a good player in a blind draw, I just want us to be able to win. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And if you get exactly. that player and you're able to win, success. Boom. You got it. You know? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's especially with a game like this, especially with Cornhole, there is no way that you are going to not lose games. Like right. everybody only has four bags. This isn't some, we talk about it all the time. This isn't some sport where someone can physically dominate you and they're going to like win the majority of the time. Once people start throwing 10 plus point per rounds, it's a coin flip. Like you don't know who's going to win. 
it, right. it, it just you don't know if a bag's going to hang on the hole or bunch up or something that's completely outside of your control and you're going to yeah. lose games. So cornhole especially if all of your yeah. identity and all your value for yourself is in you winning every game then you are just going to be you're going to be miserable. And I, I feel like we've all kind of felt that misery because we've all kind of fallen into the fallacy that um, you know maybe we can win like you know most games or whatever and and people do but i just mean like with this game specifically it's got you've got to root your identity in in, in the work that you put in and the right. effort that you're giving and not the the results no you're you're right and uh one thing that you that you hit on was uh like bag behavior i mean how many times i i have i know i have i have hit the perfect shot I hit the bag 100% where I was supposed to hit it and they just don't fall. And so yeah, that can be the difference maker. I mean, that can literally be the difference maker between winning and losing and your ability to hit the shot wasn't even a factor. You hit the shot. I mean, how many times have you hit a very hard push and it, it hits the bags and they collect and then they just sit right on the side of the hole and they don't drop. For whatever reason, all the time, and then yeah, you wait the th- you wait the three seconds or whatever, and somebody knocks on the board and they fall in, and you're just like, I hit that shot, I freaking hit it, I hit it perfect. It wasn't one of those where it's like, oh man, I was a fraction to the right or I was a fraction to the left. No, you hit the shot perfectly, and the bags didn't drop, and that can be the difference maker. So Zach's absolutely right. Once you get into that like ten plus PPR. It really does come down to intangibles. You yeah. know, you could have no amount of practice, no amount of hours put in, no amount of work on the cornhole boards in your backyard or in your gym or your wherever you go to throw can prepare you for a bag to hang up when it's been hit perfect. No, it it really can't. And so yeah, that's not it. That's clearly, you know, we're not worried about things that we can't control and so we need to focus on what we can't control and like we were saying everybody there's a certain baseline of of work that needs to be put in in any endeavor for you to even be in the conversation to compete and so we have to at least put in uh the work to be considered in the conversation of some that's of someone that can compete so that's why we're doing things like this that's why we're doing this challenge and hopefully we can kind of keep up uh, a practice regiment that's similar to this because we always want to make sure that we're in the conversation. Um, I know that you guys want uh, people to think, uh, maybe I'm going to lose this game. When you walk up to the board, they're like, oh, you know, Steve, this is Steve. I got to play him now. Like, oh, no. Like, <laughs> yeah. you want people to think that about you. Um, yes. And so, but people are never going to think that about you if you're not, if you're not putting in the work uh, to make that happen. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, it's it's like we've talked about, you know, a dozen times that, you know, there, there are people who are naturally good. I know a guy locally, um, who is unfathomably good for a guy who never throws. Mm -hmm. And I love him. Super nice guy, but he's the most frustrating individual that I've ever met. (laughs) Yeah. Because I, I throw, well, to be honest, you know, lately I don't, I haven't thrown much. Luckily I've been able to throw a ton on vacation and stuff like that. We went to the river here recently and I got to throw until the wee hours of the morning. I wouldn't say that it was concentrated practice because there were lots of shots involved. So probably not the most focused practice I could have had, but maybe not, maybe not, (laughs) but it was a lot of fun. And so there's that. And, but anyway, the guy's frustrating because it's like, you know, when I'm practicing and I'm throwing, you know, a few times a week and going to blind draws and regionals and stuff like that. And then I get up next to this dude on the boards and he's just four bagging just casually. And I'm like, mm-hmm. when's the last time you played? He's like, oh man, I don't know what, when did we play last? Like three months ago? That's probably it. <laughs> and probably three like, months ago. But yeah. And I just stare. <laughs> I'm just not happy with this. Like, how are you this good? But, but. The point, I also, I, I don't feel like this is a, a, a point that is counter to what we were talking about earlier, because I will say this, he can be inconsistent, he won't four bag every single time, but he will four bag a lot, he throws fast bags, so it's a lot of up the middle, and if you can block and dirty it up, he's got a great airmail too, which is frustrating as crap, but 
It's not like a, you know, a 60, 70% airmail. So yeah. you can, you can beat him if you strategically play him. He's not unbeatable. It's not, you know, I'm not trying to say it like that, but I have said to this guy, I literally have said to this guy, you frustrate me so bad because you were so naturally good at this game that if you just practiced even a little bit, you could be so good. If he practiced, yeah. he could be on TV. 100%. 100%. I would vouch that is any crazy. bad company in the dang country to sponsor this dude if he would just practice because he's that good. And if you're already that good practicing, again, to our point, practicing and working hard is only going to make you better. Yeah, it really is. And I mean, like, sit outliers like that, people that are just naturally good at throwing bags is, is one thing. But literally the only thing you have to ask yourself to stop worrying about that is, am I the type of person where I don't need to practice ever and I'm unbelievably amazing at this game? Okay, no. Now I need to start putting in the work to get good at this game. That's the end of it. Like, right. are you that type of person? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it's time to put in the work. Like as yes. a short conversation with yourself. Yeah. I've had that very short conversation with myself because I'm like, this isn't fair. I practice all the time and I'm still not as good. But that just means I need to practice more. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm, I'm not naturally gifted at this game. You know, clear. I've been playing for two years and I'm still, you know, in the seven PPRs typically over the course of a tournament. So, yeah, but. it is what it is. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I also want to say that not all practice is created equal. When we talk about once everybody is around the same skill level, it really comes down to intangibles. Well, one of those intangibles would be your focus. Um, I was listening to a podcast the other day with uh, a neuroscientist, Andrew Huberman, and he was talking about how the level of focus that we bring to an activity that we're trying to get better at is directly correlate to how quickly um, we get better at that skill. It's not just simply droning in your backyard, throwing bags, throwing bags over and over again. If you yeah. can bring a high level of focus to anything you're trying to do, whether it be learn a language or slide cornhole bags in the hole, that is going to help you so much more. Like less really can be more if you're bringing more focus to what you're doing. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And um, this is the first I've heard um, of, of that. We haven't talked about it in our other conversations, but um, that's very interesting and is so like just surface level true. Like I don't even have mm -hmm. to dig into it. I don't have to listen to that podcast or listen to that doctor to know that if it's something you're passionate about, then your brain is going to try to help you every second that it can. If it's something yep. that you love, you know, I, we talked to, I talked to, um, you know, mama's recently getting into, you know, um, trying to grow a, a food in our gardens and, and we're getting chickens. We, we've got chickens currently. We have, we have six chickens guys, you know, nice. pay for us. So, but, um, we're going to be getting, you know, our eggs and stuff like that. But the I digress with that, but it, to that point, you can ask mama right now any kind of information that you want to about chickens and she could probably talk to you for about 30 or 40 minutes about it. Yep. And it's because it's she's crazy. very, very passionate and very focused on learning as much as she can about it. And yeah, chickens is different than cornhole, but it's not really because it's something that you're passionate about and it's something that mm -hmm. you're putting effort into. Your, your brain is, you're getting serotonin hits when you're, when you're out there doing what it is that you love and when you're out there practicing and you're focused on it and it's, it's, you hit that four bagger and you're, man, you're just over the moon about it. Or you hit that sick, uh, airmail drag, you know, like you've got, you threw your third bag, it hung up on the back of the hole. And so you've got your fourth bag in your hand and you let it rip and you snatch that bag in. There's no feeling in the world like that. Even when you're it's practicing, amazing. you sure want to hit that bag when you're in a blind draw or a tournament situation. But I defy anyone tell me that you don't like fist pump or like yes when you're in practice and you hit that bag on purpose. Yeah, there's you can't tell me that you're you're not over the moon about it. And it's just these serotonin hits and these you know the the your brain wants you to be good at things that you want to be good at, and so That's it's right. helping you every step of the way. So that neuroscientist you know talking about that, it seems so obvious. But it's true. You know, if you're passionate about it and you're putting the time in, you're going to get it. I mean, how often 
I, I can tell you on a daily basis, I will forget a hundred things, but yep. I won't forget the things that I'm passionate about. You know, that's exactly right. And, it's and it's a, <laughs> to the sorry, to my ahead. detriment. No, to my detriment, sometimes I forget things that my wife tells me to do, and she'll actually counter with, well, I bet if it was cornhole, you wouldn't have forgotten it. And I'm like, you're probably right, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> you're probably right about that, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there is. yeah, I mean, yeah. it's really like, if you think about, I mean, pe- you probably hear people saying it growing up all the time. I mean, like, I, I really like to read on my own, but I really don't like to read when school tells me I have to read a specific book or whatever. It's, it's your like, sister. yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But it's, I mean, we're, we're probably way out of our, our depth here talking about like neuroscience, but what the little I do know about it, like we, we have these chemical reward systems in our brain, uh, specifically um, with dopamine is it's like a short term chemical that makes us um, it's like a short term gratification chemical that kind of lets us know, um, that something is good to do. So if I'm eating a piece of fruit or something, uh, my brain tells me like, this is good, keep doing this. But then you have, like you're saying, the serotonin coming into your brain. And this is that long term, like I'm on the right track. I'm on a meaningful track. It's like what's released like during childbirth and during like big, um, moments in your life and stuff. And so you can, you can lose games and you have a huge drop in dopamine. And if you just keep losing games and going back and losing and losing, it takes you below baseline. But if you're practicing at home when you're seeing yourself, you do like this challenge with us and you're seeing yourself progress and get better, you're, you're going to start releasing that serotonin. Your body's going to say, Hey, I'm actually on the right track. I am getting better. I'm not only being defeated over and over again. And it's basically just kind of proving to yourself, that you are on the right track, you are consistently getting better, and um, you're rewarding yourself uh, by practicing and putting in the work. No. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. And so I hope that, uh, I hope that you know, through the challenge, um, and I hope that some of you guys will participate in this because I really do feel like it could benefit you. And hell, if we have five people participate, if we have two people participate in it, I'm excited to know, I'm excited to know how you do, you know, I mean, this is, you know, it doesn't have to be anything on a grandiose level, but I guarantee you that there's a player out there who's going to participate in this and they're going to be better because of it. That's right. Exactly. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was your, your approach when, uh, when you're looking at competition, like who are you trying to beat? Are you, are you trying to beat other people? Or are you trying to beat your old self? And I think that trying to beat other people is never going to be as powerful or as motivating as trying to beat um, a previous version of yourself. What do you think about that, Dad? No, I think you're absolutely right. Um, I, I I will say that I think that you know uh, we all have we all have that one individual or person that we run up to and we have trouble with at the blind draw. Or at the tournament in the singles division, you know, and you're in singles and you get this person on your bracket and you're just like, ugh, I hate playing this person. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. There's definitely something to being like, I just want to beat that guy. But um, to what you said, I think if you look at it from a macro perspective, trying to beat that guy is ultimately trying to beat your prior self that lost to that guy. Am I wrong? True. Yeah. So if if your if version 1.0 goes into the singles event against this person and loses, then let's make version 2.0 better. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And if I mean I'm better than I was when I played him, sure, he might be better as well. But who who you know, let's let's keep going. Let me just keep beating uh my prior self until all of a sudden my current self is better than this other individual and then try to beat yourself again and just keep trying to be better. I just, that's, I feel like you get so much more out of that than putting a face on it, you know, putting a face on your practice. That's yourself, like putting a mirror up to yourself when you're practicing. I feel like is so much more advantageous than, than putting some other random person's face up there because you don't know what they're doing. Right. Exactly. I mean, it's, say, yeah. 
Sorry, go ahead. Let's say what? No, I was just going to say, let's just say that they're doing everything you're doing. Well, then, you know, it might be more difficult to beat them next time because they're doing the same thing. But if you can, you can definitely play better than you played in your last event. That is tangible. That is almost guaranteed if you're working and you're putting in time. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, I... I get it. I, I think like at a really high level, um, people, you know, kind of call their shot. Like when we talk to, to Justin Duke about it, he, he finds someone that he wants to beat specifically. Um, but for, I still feel like for this game, there's no amount of, we each have four bags and I can't grit my teeth and be like, Ooh, I really want to beat this guy. So now I'm going to do so much better. Like it it doesn't really, it doesn't really do anything. It's not like I can physically work harder or like I can bring more focus, but my focus is really on just like throwing the bags in the hole. And like, so this isn't a game where you can like, okay, I'm really going to toughen up here. I'm really going to, I mean, you can, but I just feel like at the end of the day, it's the same motion. And so being more focused on what you're doing has yeah. to be more beneficial. And then what happens when yeah. you beat that guy? Is all of your focus gone because that was your only goal? And sometimes or... sometimes it is. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it does. Like you beat the person that you set out to beat and then you lose your next game because you you accomplished your goal, you know? And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I really don't. I feel like uh, you know, Justin was really onto something and I think we talked about it afterwards that that was a really cool takeaway from that interview was that he found somebody in the bracket and he said, I want that guy. And, but yeah, he's not going into that bracket saying, I want that guy. He's going into that bracket saying I've put in the work. I'm better than I was. Yeah, true. And so I want my work to pay off against that guy right there because I feel like I've worked harder and I feel like I, I could, I can take him, you know? And, and it, and so I don't think there's anything wrong with that, you know, and you and I talked about that takeaway as well. Like when we go into our singles events, you had trouble with a guy, you know, and he beat you uh, twice. And so you were like, I know I'm going to play him because we're the one and two guys in the bracket, you know, yeah. so I know I'm eventually going to play him. And so, yeah, you want to do that. You want to get in there and get that early win. Uh, same thing with me. I know that there are some people that are tougher to play when, you know, when I'm going into singles. And so I'm like, all right, let's go. You know, let me get this person. Let me get this person to see what I can do. But it always comes from a place of I have worked and I have prepared for this moment. I'm going to have to beat this individual to accomplish the goal that I've set for myself. And so let me play that guy so I can go ahead and get him out of the way. Because yeah. I, my goal we is have to, win, to my goal is to win the division or to win the to win the event. And I've not yet been able to do that in singles. And so that's still my goal. Uh, I've not podiumed yet to this point. So, um, but that's my, that's my goal. When I'm working and I'm putting in the effort, I don't put anybody's face on it, but mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, And I, another thing I wanted to talk about while we were talking about goals is you have to establish what your end state is like, Everything we're talking about right now, it probably, I mean, a lot of it does apply, but like, if you're trying to be a world champion, like if if you're trying to like beat Mark Richards or something and be on ESPN, then you probably are going to have a a practice regiment that looks a lot different than just two deck arounds and a hundred air mails a day. Like it could be seriously all you do and it can, it has to be an all consuming fire of just a desire to succeed and a will to win that a lot of us who have different passions, different hobbies, families work, um, you know, and I I know that these guys, these guys work as well, but I I know that they will be the first one to tell you that that is the sole focus is being successful at what they're doing. Whereas I just want to be good enough to where if I draw a top level player at a blind draw, we're going to win the blind draw or we're going to, be in the you know top two or whatever no i agree with that i mean i think that's the that's the ultimate goal is to just you know for us that we're not going to be um not at this moment i don't think either of us i think we're going to be professional cornhole players and, and maybe one day we will but you know as of right now that's not the goal the goal is to just be 
uh, as good as we can be with the amount of time that we have and the ability that we have uh, and to maximize that. You know, we practice when we can practice. We throw when we can throw. We go to what we can go to. And we just want to be competitive at these things, you know? For sure. It's fun. Like, you want to be good enough to compete. That that's that's really where I'm at. I want to be good enough to compete. It's not it's not fun if you just have no chance. And and so to to be able to play the the game, do the dance, like play the chess match, like that's what's really fun. And so I just want to make sure that I have the skill and the ability to compete. And um, you know, I'm not playing sports or anymore. Uh, I'm not playing sports anymore or anything like that. So I really love the competition i love the the mental focus that's required Mm -hmm. and um it's just a really fun game and to be a part of the community part of it is you know being able to compete with other people and so i think it's all you know it's all worth it uh any anything that you put uh a high level of focus and uh determination towards i i don't think that's ever going to be a waste right I agree with you. No, you're absolutely right. So it's all about, you know, it's all about prioritizing. It's all about, um, it's all about putting in the effort to fulfill the goals that you have, you know? Yeah. No matter what that yeah, looks like I agree. to you. And I think, you know, sometimes life isn't fair. Sometimes we work hard and we, we don't get the, you know, success that we feel like we deserve. But at the end of the day, like, that's outside of our control. And if we even want a chance, we have to, we have to, you know, give our best effort. And I think that the majority of time life is pretty fair. I think when I have come up short in certain situations, uh, throughout life and throughout cornhole, I I've I've realized, I know you're the only one that knows, but you know, okay. Yeah. I I could have, you know, I could have done more. I could have, you know, Mm -hmm. given a better effort. I could have been more disciplined. And so I feel like, you know, you're really the only one that knows. You're right. Absolutely. You're right. And I mean, you know, there, there are big takeaways, you know, I know that, uh, you know, in my last, last event I went to, I did, I wasn't able to practice as much as I did the prior. And, you know, I was able to walk away from that, you know, disappointed in my performance, but also, you know, it's like, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I didn't put in the effort to, to beat everybody. And so I did it beat everybody so i mean it just is what it is you know exactly yeah i mean like if anything we should be happy for whoever did um because we we all have a desire to like live in like a just fair world so like if anything you should be happy for the person that actually put in the work to you know to take down the bracket or whatever because they deserve it and if and if you didn't deserve it that day then that's okay and get back on your horse and keep going that's right Maybe I'll be able to hit these deck arounds and this, uh, and these airmails over 21 days. And maybe I'll just be an absolute unit beast when I come back to the boards. It's entirely possible. You could be amazing by the end of it. Um, but what I can pretty much guarantee is that we'll be better than when we're, (laughs) when we started for sure. Yeah. Let's hope so. Heck yeah. Well, dad, if you don't have anything else, I guess we can wrap this, this thing up. No, let's wrap it. Cool. Well, uh, we really appreciate you guys listening. And um, as always, uh, please like this video and comment down below. Let us know uh, anything you'd like us to talk about or if you have any questions. Um, We really try to respond to you guys as much as we can on YouTube and uh, definitely on Facebook as well. Uh, Don't, you know, don't be shy to reach out. Uh, We always love to to hear success stories or to answer any questions that we can. And um, we really appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you in the next one. All right, see you guys.